Welcome to the Hawaii Association of College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for coming. We're so happy that you're here with us this evening as well. Remember, during this whole event, you can still talk with the reps with the Q&A button that's on your screen. All your questions will go there as you want to communicate with them as we have our different sessions. Remember, your camera and microphone is off, so you can communicate them with all that way, but mainly through the Q&A button. Also, don't forget there are other sessions going on this evening at all. Please sign up for those if you want to after you finish this one. Along with that, our recording this event will be available for you at strivescan.com backslash Hawaii as well. So that's enough of the housekeeping for the evening at all. Let's um, start off this evening with Oregon State University. Great. Happy to be here. Welcome, everybody. I'll uh, get my... Uh, presentation up and running here. Uh, with uh, My name is Blake Fodder. I'm with Oregon State University. We're located in Corvallis, Oregon. Um, I'd like to say welcome to everybody. Uh, wonderful day here in the Willamette Valley. Uh, right now it's about 62 degrees, sunny, gorgeous day. Um, some of the images you can see there are some spots of our uh, lovely uh, little college town, little uh, scenic parts of the coast not far away from campus, and just a few other scenes there as well. Uh, Oregon State University is the state's research university. We, in fact, uh, receive uh, more research funding than all our other institutions in the state combined. Uh, so we have a lot of, lot of reach around the state of Oregon. You can see on the map here uh, the main campus, Oregon State University in Corvallis. Uh, we have a branch campus about two hour, two and a half hours away uh, in Bend, Oregon, called OSU Cascades. We also have uh, Food Innovation Center in Portland, OSU Seafood Lab, and finally the Hatfield Marine Science Center located in Newport, Oregon, uh, home to our uh, research vessels and fleet that, that does research out in the Pacific, uh, and just a, uh, an excellent uh, research facility in its own right. Uh, a little bit about Corvallis. Uh, it's definitely a traditional college town. Uh, we have about 56,000 full-time residents in Corvallis, uh, 32,000 uh, students at Oregon State, and of those, about 26, a little over 26,000 are uh, undergraduate students. In fact, Oregon State's the largest institution in the state of Oregon. And you can keep, see uh, on the bottom there a few of the different uh, rankings and things that uh, talk about our campus and talk about our city. Uh, pretty safe place, super friendly kind of uh, location and definitely a traditional college town experience. Um, we're also uh, been recently rated as one, the top uh, innovative institution in the Pacific Northwest. You can see along the bottom too, some of the areas in which we uh, definitely excel, uh, number two and number three in forestry and oceanography in the world. Uh, definitely uh, really big focus of our, uh, a lot of our research programs. We also offer over 200 different undergraduate academic programs at Oregon State, and that's the most offered uh, in our state. And down the right, you can see all the different academic colleges that house each of those majors. And so a wide spread from agricultural sciences through to engineering, which is one of our largest colleges, uh, forestry, which is one of the smaller ones, um, and of course, public health and human sciences, uh, definitely very popular. Uh, this time of year for sure. Uh, along the right, or excuse me, along the left, you can see uh, listing a few of our specialty programs. I'll call out a couple. The Honors College is a uh, competitive, um, smaller type experience for the Honors College, uh, open to any major, so it's not restricted in any way. Um, class sizes are typically 20 or smaller, freshman, sophomore year, 12 or less, your junior or senior year. You actually write a thesis. Uh, and uh, we have pretty much a, a mid to high 90% placement rate for graduates out of the Honors College into professional and graduate programs uh, throughout the country. We also have the only veterinary medicine program in our state and uh, one of the oldest uh, pharmacy schools in the state of Oregon. Um, you can use that QR code at the bottom to get to our Find Your Major page. So, Within those majors, I talked about being a research university. Um, what that tends to spawn are a number of different research centers, locations um, around the state that uh, students get a chance to get out of the classroom and conduct research side by side with, uh, with 
faculty from our campus and you do a listing of a few of them there. So what's the advantage of being at a research university? Um, a number of different uh, chances to be involved in research with world-class faculty, getting out of the classroom and in all different kinds of areas. But what we really find is that students are successful in going on to the next thing. So that may be medical school or going to veterinary school. Uh, we do very well in the engineering placement for our graduates. You can kind of see those listed there. But we're not all about the classroom. In fact, uh, we have over 400 student groups and clubs on campus. Uh, all different kinds of things for students to participate in. Dam Jam's a big uh, concert series and, and uh, event in the spring. Um, the Adventure Leadership Institute is one if you'd like to get out and take a backpacking trip or go kayaking or rafting or things like that. You can rent your gear or take a class, things like that. Um, and you'll see we have seven distinct cultural resource centers around campus. So that's definitely uh, something that's unique to our institution. Um, we're also a Pac-12 Division I sports uh, institution. You may have seen earlier today our men uh, made it to the Elite Eight in basketball. We're pretty excited about that. Uh, Three-time national champions in baseball. Women's basketball doing great. Uh, you can kind of see some of the different locations for uh, participation there. I'll quickly talk about admission and scholarships. Uh, we use holistic admissions for review. Um, we are test optional uh, and then um, we look at basically strength through curriculum, GPA, and your uh, any college prep courses, and your Common App or uh, essay if you take the OSU uh, application, we'll use the Common App prompts. And finally, uh, we are part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. Uh, scholarships are competitive, so not every student will receive one, but it's based on that holistic review of your admissions application. Uh, and Hawaii is for sure uh, one of our WUI states and is the top, uh, is the third largest out-of-state population at Oregon State behind California and Washington. That was a quick run. Uh, again, my name is Blake and I am your advisor for uh, the state of Hawaii. So I uh, hope you come join us sometime. i uh, love to see you on campus. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Oregon State University. Next, we're gonna have DePaul University. Wonderful, thanks so much. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Annie Mills and I represent DePaul University based out of San Diego, California, and I am the contact for students in Hawaii. Um, DePaul is a private Catholic institution in the heart of Chicago, Illinois, with an undergraduate population of 14,500 students. We have big school resources and we are in the third largest city in the US. Your academic experience at DePaul is going to be very personal by design. Our average class size is 22 and 90% of our classes have fewer than 40 students. Our student body at DePaul is very diverse and reflects the diversity of our global community. 40% of our students come to DePaul from out of state with California and Michigan leading the way. 44% of our freshmen are students of color and 35% of our freshmen are the first in their family to earn a college degree. While we are a Catholic school, the DePaul experience really is as Catholic as you make it. We have students from over 40 different faith and non-faith backgrounds on campus. Um, as you may have guessed, we were named for St. Vincent de Paul. He dedicated his life to ending cycles of poverty and social injustice, and we really aim to keep that Vincentian tradition alive. We prepare all of our students to think and act with others in mind, using their higher education as a means to engage cultural, social, religious, and ethical values in service to others. Now, DePaul students split their time between two campuses in the city of Chicago. Our Lincoln Park campus, which we call our urban neighborhood campus, has a traditional feel with a quad, 11 residence halls, a student center, a big library, it's where you'd be most likely to see a student going to class in a DePaul hoodie. Then a 15 minute ride away on public transportation is our campus in Chicago's financial district called our Loop Campus. Here students will take elevators to class instead of walking across the quad and you'd be much more likely to see a student going to class in a blazer, maybe coming straight from an internship or job shadowing with their alumni mentor in the city. Almost all of our students at DePaul are going to take classes on both campuses. Academically, our students pick from over 300 options spread across 10 schools and colleges. Some of our most popular programs are housed in our conservatory uh, style schools of theater and music and our college of business. And our science and health focused degrees are strong and we even have accelerated options for students interested in medical related professions. Um, our College of Computing and Digital Media is our fastest growing school and is home to film and television, which as you can see is our most popular major for incoming freshmen, um, as well as animation and game design. Um, we have 
several honors options at DePaul, a university-wide program, and then specific programs for business and health sciences students. And you can do a combined three plus three with DePaul's law school, where you'll graduate with a bachelor's and a JD in six years instead of seven. Now, if you're someone who looks at this list and sees a lot of things that you like, that's no problem. We're double major and minor friendly across schools and colleges, and we embrace change. As long as you're in good academic um, standing, you can change your major at any time. DePaul students are incredibly involved on campus. We have over 400 different clubs and organizations. Students cheer for our NCAA Division I Blue Demons, um, plan events that happen on campus, are a part of one of many um, comedy troops. They play club and intramural sports. Uh, we have a lot of political, religious, and academically focused clubs, and about 10% of our students are involved in fraternity or sorority life. In one afternoon at DePaul, you can help plan Demonthon, our dance marathon, attend a theater production on campus, and then go sample the local fair with the people pizza club. Um, to help our students get used to the city, especially all those students who come from out of state, all of our freshmen are required to take a seminar in their first quarter called the Chicago Quarter Class. Um, in this class, you'll go on site visits and explore the city using one of over 100 different topics as a lens. You could take a class about the Cubs, crime and politics in Chicago, improv in the city, or art and public sculpture. Uh, in that class, you go on group excursions to the Art Institute and to the Bean, but you'd also get out of the loop in Lincoln Park and explore murals in Pilsen, get to know how the history of that community impacts the experience of its residents and the art they create. The class is a great way for students to explore new neighborhoods, to learn how to use the L and the buses, which will be crucial to your success as a student in the city, um, and also get to know resources on campus, like the Writing Center, the Career Center, and our Center for Students with Disabilities. We are very proud of our outcomes at DePaul. Six months after graduation, 91% of our students are employed or continuing their education. That's no accident, and it's due in large part to the fact that all of our students are required to do experiential learning in their junior year, either through an internship, a study abroad program, or an intensive community-based service learning project. Our, um, our students also actively utilize the Career Center throughout their four years, which really helps um, our outcomes look strong. So if all of this sounds interesting to you, we would love to have you apply to DePaul um, at some point in your future um, on the Common Application. We utilize a holistic review process, which means we'll look at your essay, resume, activity summary, and letters of recommendation. Um, in addition, of course, to your transcript um, and maybe a test score. We're really proud to have been test optional uh, for 10 years for admission decision, academic merit-based scholarship opportunities, and for our honors programs. So if you are considering DePaul, really feel free to think about how you would like to highlight your own strengths in the application. If a test score does not reflect who you are as a student, um, or this year, maybe a little bit more so you don't have one, that is absolutely no problem. Um, there really are a lot of ways to um, connect with DePaul and get to know us these days, and there's so much more to tell you um, than you know, what I covered here. I barely even mentioned housing, study abroad, the volunteer work our students do throughout Chicago. Reach out, let me know um, what would help you as you're considering DePaul. I'm excited that you're learning more about us and all of the other schools in this session, and I look forward to working with you over the coming year. Feel free to submit any questions you have for me into the Q&A and I will answer those throughout the rest of the session. And that is all for DePaul, thanks. Thank you so much, DePaul University. Next, we're gonna have University of Wyoming. All righty, thank you guys for being here today. My name is Cade Russell. I am the admissions representative for the University of Wyoming. We are located in Laramie, Wyoming, a town of about 32,000 people just two hours north of Denver, Colorado. Laramie has been ranked the number one small college town in America, a little bit more. About the University of Wyoming, we are the only four-year institution in the state of Wyoming, which means that we have got all the support from the state of Wyoming. So a little bit more about us. Our current enrollment is 12,249 students. We have a faculty student ratio of right around 15 to one, our average class size is 30 students. The nice thing about this is that you have the opportunity to actually know your professor by first name, and then that professor will also know you by first name. So we're very, very proud of that. 90% of our classes are taught by professors here at the University of Wyoming. And then 92% of our graduates last year were in grad school or had a job six months after graduation. So a little bit more about the University of Wyoming. We are located in the heart of the Mountain West. So we offer over 100 different miles of biking and hiking trails. We have 2.9 million acres of national forest that surround Laramie itself. We're 30 minutes away from skiing and snow sports just directly to the west of us. And then 15 miles away from amazing climbing 
as well. Laramie truly is an outdoor paradise if that is what you are into. A little bit more about the University of Wyoming. We do have Division I athletics here. We're very, very proud of our Cowboys and Cowgirls that compete within the Mountain West Conference. Um, we're, we're so, so proud of them. And then we've also got over 20 different club sports here at the University of Wyoming, 50 different intramural sports, an amazing Greek system, fine arts as well. So if you're interested in choir, orchestra, all that other good stuff, we have that here at the University of Wyoming. And then over 300 different clubs and organizations for students, world-class facilities. I cannot emphasize that enough. And then really what's all about being a cowboy is that love and loyalty. Being that only four-year institution in the state, you've got all the support that you would ever need. And people really, really are proud and you know have so much pride to be a Wyoming cowboy. And once you're a Wyoming cowboy, you're always going to be a Wyoming Cowboy. When it comes down to majors and areas of study, we offer over 200 different areas of study here at the University of Wyoming. This ranges everywhere from accounting all the way down to zoology. Double major and minor options are totally cool and good to go here at the University of Wyoming. Some of our top colleges are engineering, nursing, business, education, environment, and natural resources, zoology, wildlife biology. All of those great programs are absolutely fantastic here at the University of Wyoming. So when it comes down to admissions, we operate on a rolling admission status here at the University of Wyoming. So when we receive your application, we will get back to you within seven to 10 business days to let you know that you are admitted to the University of Wyoming. What we are looking for is a high school success curriculum of four years of English, math, science, three years of social science, four years of, the, of additional coursework, and then a high school GPA of 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. We are test optional for fall of 2021. And then once you have this success curriculum, we will get back to you with that admissions decision. Um, and yeah, that's kind of our admissions process. Pretty, pretty easy. Uh, no essay required here at the University of Wyoming. We do offer direct entry nursing into nursing in our pharmacy program. And when you apply to a program here at the University of Wyoming, um, you're directly admitted. Uh, and that's that's a nice thing as well. Pay that $40 application fee, send us your transcripts, and that is where we will go. So this is our main out-of-state scholarship for students here at the University of Wyoming. The way that you figure out how much you are going to be directly awarded is by looking at your high school unweighted GPA on this left-hand side, an ACT, SAT score. Put those two numbers together, and that is where you can find your award from the University of Wyoming. We also have this awesome test optional category on the right hand side as well. And we are a WUI participating school as well. Um, and so that is another option for scholarships as well. So a, a couple other great points about the University of Wyoming. We are currently offering in-person tours up here in Laramie. We would love to you know, host you all the way from Hawaii uh, here up in Laramie. And then we are also proud to announce that we are fully reopening for fall of 2021. We can't wait to offer that amazing student experience within the you know, small college town of Laramie. Um, we're so, so excited about things that are moving forward. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that we have gotten an amazing study abroad program here at the University of Wyoming. We've got the single largest endowment for studying abroad for a public four-year institution in the entire nation. Um, and so what this means is that you can go and study abroad in one of our 400 different locations in over 83 different countries at a very, very uh, low price. And that, that's a huge thing about the University of Wyoming as well. My name again is Cade Russo. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions, comments, concerns, you name it. I wanna make sure that all of your questions have answers associated with that. We would absolutely love to have you here at the University of Wyoming. And uh, that is all that I've got for you guys. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much, University of Wyoming. Next, we're going to have Arizona State University. All right, my name is Brad Barch. I am Senior Director of Admissions here at Arizona State University. And thanks for joining us and spending part of your Saturday. Um, Throughout ASU and getting to know who we are, um, we wanna be judged by who we include, not who we exclude here at the university. And so you'll find that our charter is embedded in everything that we do from our admissions work to success when you're here, um, where a lot of universities will talk about selectivity, the number of students that they have applied, the record numbers that they deny. Here at ASU, we believe that if you meet the requirements, um, you have the tools necessary to be successful here, and we'll also equip you with additional tools to make sure that you stay on track and graduate. 
Um, a few things because, you know, as we talk about rankings, we find that important. Um, ASU was recently listed as the number four public university for undergraduate education and the first year experience. And so that tells you what you're going to experience in the classroom, as well as the support outside of the classroom is here to make sure that you're going to be successful. It also means that ASU is designed for a modern and contemporary student. And so um, many of you will hear about ASU and being ranked number one in innovation. And what does this really mean? Um, as you as students are thinking about your educational journeys, think about technology and how that has rapidly accelerated over the last 10 years. And with the pandemic, all of the advances in science and technology. And this is what a modern research university needs to be in equip you as a student and be nimble um, in the world that we are a part of. So that's a big hallmark is this innovation and not being stuck in tradition um, or history necessarily, but designing the future. Um, ASU is one of the largest public universities in the country. We have over 70, 75,000 on-campus students across all four campuses. Um, last year, we had our second largest class um, attending the university representative of all US states, um, multiple um, international or national um, countries. And then we have about 75 to 90 students from Hawaii enrolling each year. We're spread across four campuses in the metropolitan Phoenix area. It's important to understand this because ASU and Phoenix are big places. Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the country that has a square mileage that's actually larger than Los Angeles. ASU is the only research university serving the needs of the fifth largest city in the country. And so each of these campuses has a theme and identity. So you as a student get to customize your experience. Most of us know the Tempe campus, which is that traditional large college experience. Um, the downtown Phoenix campus is home to all of our programs that serve a public purpose. So whether the state capitol is a few blocks away or all the major TV media outlets are right around the campus uh, itself, this is what those type of experiences are going to be like. The West Campus is almost the antithesis to what we think of ASU. It's a small liberal arts experience with about a thousand first year students. And then the Polytechnic Campus is really the campus that's designed for students that like to take things apart, figure out how it works and put it back together again. All of these are ASU together. You're Sun Devil no matter what campus that you attend. It's about you finding what is the right fit. Um, ASU is a complex organization and we've designed a lot of tools for you as a student to be successful and find and navigate your way here. One that I want you all to consider is what's called ME3. ME3 works on a lot of psychological research based upon preference and what excites you. You can swipe through about 65 photos and it will align to degree programs at ASU that might be a good match for you. Another one is you might be wondering about how you fit in the campus um, community and what size is right or what you're looking for as an experience. The campus fit quiz is another ax or resource that you have available to you. So these are two really cool tools that I encourage you to start looking at as you're researching ASU. Getting involved across all four campuses, um, my best advice to you is editing your list and design or being intentional about what's important to you. There's a variety of different clubs and organization, well over 1,200, representing everything from um, academic organization types to multicultural types. Um, we just started a uh, Native Hawaiian student group here that's in our coalition group, um, which is really exciting, led by two um, students that have joined us from Kamehameha schools about three years ago. So that's taking off. Finally, uh, I wanna wrap up a little bit with our scholarship and admissions process. Admissions process at ASU, really straightforward. You meet the requirements, you're admitted. Scholarships, we award based upon the classes that you've taken, as well as your grades in those classes. So it's a little bit um, different and we've developed our scholarship estimator where you as a student can input your high school grades and classes as well as um, where you're from and it will estimate what you're likely to receive there. So we are test optional for our merit scholarships. We've always been test optional for our um, admission to the university. Finally, when it comes to scholarships, we are a WUI eligible school for select degree programs um, acro across three of our campuses. Nothing at the Tempe campus is eligible for the Western Undergraduate Exchange, but select programs at the Polytechnic, West, and Downtown campus are eligible for that. So again, ASU becomes a really affordable option for you coming here. Um, and if you have questions about what is the right program for you, how does that scholarship option work, feel free to contact me. Um, I know visiting is a challenge. We have limited in-person experiences right now and the challenges of traveling to and from Hawaii. Um, you can take 
advantage of all of our virtual options by visiting visit.asu.edu. If you want to come in person, let me know so I can help navigate that and get your tour scheduled for you. One of the things that we've designed knowing these challenges is a partnership with Amazon Prime and launching the college tour, where it's a 55 minute documentary with student experiences and a campus tour that you can access on Amazon, Roku, or YouTube. So be sure to take a photo of this link and get connected there. This is my contact information and I'll turn it over to John. Thank you so much, Arizona State University. And do remember, if you do have questions for any of these reps at all and want to communicate with them this evening, please make sure you use the Q&A button below on your screen. Next, we're going to have Lawrence University. Hello. Um, I'm Mary Beth Petrie. Um, most people call me Beth. I am the Dean of Admissions at Lawrence University in Appleton, Wisconsin. Um, we are located uh, in, in a city, uh, so Appleton is a metropolitan area of about 250,000 people, um, but uh, I am coming to you virtually from the, uh, my virtual background of our Door County campus, which is um, uh, called Bjork London, I'll say that again, Bjork London, uh, and that means Birch Forest. It is actually 441 acres, um, about two hours north of our campus. We call it our natural campus um, in, in Door County, Wisconsin. So this beautiful retreat area that students go to on the weekends to study. Um, they can go do research there. Um, they do seminar weekends there. They do language immersion weekends there. Um, so uh, uh, anyway, it's just uh, one of our beautiful areas. Another uh, location, that a lot of our students get an opportunity to spend some time in is in London. Uh, in London, England, we have a campus, a campus center there where um, students can go study. Uh, we're on a term system at Lawrence, so three terms, and students on any of our terms can apply for the London Center and choose to go there. Um, there's over 50, uh, 50 the cities in the world though where students can study. So many of our students do. Almost half of our students study off campus at some point um, before they graduate from Lawrence. So I'm going to talk to you now that I've told you a little, oriented you a little bit about um, where we have some uh, campus locations. I'm going to uh, share my screen and tell you a little bit more um, about uh, our our location in Appleton, Wisconsin. This is what you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, this is our, um, our, our main campus. And in the foreground and in the background, you can see uh, downtown Appleton. We are 700, I'm sorry, there's 75,000 people in Appleton itself, but the metro area is about quarter of a million people. Uh, we do have an international airport. So our students who are flying here actually fly right into Appleton. And then it's about a 15 minute drive right down College Avenue to where our campus is. Um, we are a, a, Lawrence University is a, is a uh, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences as well as a Conservatory of Music. So our degrees are Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Music and Bachelor of Musical Arts. Students can also combine their interest in um, many different areas in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences with an area in music to do a dual degree, a double degree in a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Music and graduate in five years. Um, we have everything from, you know, neuroscience to jazz studies. Um, students are interested in creative writing to opera to Japanese to um, uh, gender studies. Um, so many different areas to explore and we encourage students to explore. Most of our students do come in as what we call multi-interested. That's not just a fancy word for undecided. That our students, it really does describe who they are. They're interested in many different things. Um, they don't wanna choose maybe just one to begin with. And so we encourage that exploration. We have 1,500 students um, who come from all over the country and all over the world. So about 15% of our students are coming from outside of the United States. They're coming from uh, over 38 countries. And we have just under 20% of our students come from the state of Wisconsin, which means that many, many students are coming from um, many different places around the country, 48 states, including, yes, Hawaii. And, um, 
uh, it just makes for a more um, diverse, interesting perspectives um, in our, our studies of, to have students from, uh, from many different places around the world. Uh, we uh, are a college that changes lives. So I know many colleges change lives, but we are actually a member of the organization Colleges That Change Lives, which is based on a, a book by Lauren Pope, identifying certain colleges as ones that have a uh, great uh, potential to change the tra tra trajectories of students' lives. Um, so I highly encourage you to check out the book if you haven't already. It will tell you about 40 different colleges and what makes us different. Lawrence has been test optional since 2006. We will continue to do so. Our application fee is free. Uh, uh, we have scholarships that range uh, to up to um, more than half tuition, really. Um, but we also do our best to meet a student's financial needs. So we'll ask students to apply for financial aid. And then we'll do a, a, an analysis to determine how we can apply Lawrence University um, aid and funding to help families afford it. Uh, you'll see a few other stats on here. I won't bother reading all of them out to you, but I do want to point out to you um, how active the campus is. We do have so many um, activities going on on campus. Even this year, uh, we've managed a, a fun way uh, through the pandemic to, um, to still engage with each other. Uh, we have 22 Division Three sports, um, and we have so many different musical performances each night. Um, so that's a few of the things that really makes Lawrence a special place. Right, and I'll look forward to uh, hopefully seeing some of you on campus in the near future. Thanks, John. Thank you so much, Lawrence University. Now we're going to have the University of San Diego. Sorry, I think I might have been on, on mute there. So um, welcome, Steve Poltz, University of San Diego uh, again. So I'll, I'll highlight a couple of things about, about USD that I think are really um, significant that our students highlight uh, about why they came to, to USD. Um, one of the things I think is that um, University of San Diego is known very much for, for its inspiring surroundings. And, and I say that cautiously, knowing that uh, you all live in one of the most beautiful places, and I certainly get uh, miss getting to come and visit. But but here on the mainland, our campus often gets cited as one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. We're certainly very proud of that. Our city of San Diego is a, is a beautiful city. Uh, again, a destination city that has miles and miles of beaches and uh, beautiful recreation uh, areas. It is a rich in culture and history. Uh, it's a border city, so it certainly has a, a very international flavor to it as well. And our campus is beautiful for a reason. And when we were founded, and we're a fairly young school, but when we were founded by Bishop, the Bishop of San Diego at the time, Bishop Francis Buddy and Mother Rosalie Hill, they wanted to build a place that would surround students with beauty and it would inspire them to go out and to make a difference in the world. And that's a fundamental core value that I'm going to come back to a couple of times here. But um, inspiring our students to make a difference in our, our community and, and in the world is something that, um, that USD takes a lot of pride in. Um, so the inspiring surroundings would certainly be one thing. I think the second thing is that students at, U, at um, USD really value the very personal learning environment. You've just heard from lots of different schools of all different sizes. We sort of fall in the middle uh, of that uh, group. We have just under 6,000 undergraduates. So our, our students learn in pretty small classes. They, they we don't have big lecture halls. They very much uh, are um, engaged with our faculty. And at USD, our faculty not only teach, but all of our first year students are matched up with a faculty advisor. So our, our faculty advise students throughout of their years at USD, helping them navigate the curriculum, helping them choose a major, and ultimately helping them get, get on their way towards uh, selecting a, a career path as well. Um, it is a, a very um, tight-knit community. We're a very residential community, so our students live on campus for at least the first two years uh, in, in, in better times. We are, were able to house some students this year, even though we were in remote learning. And being able to live in, in our in, in, on campus with students from all 50 states and, and about 50 countries from around the world, 
uh, is, is I think, you know, adds a lot to our, our, our sense of community and that very international perspective. And, and there's a lot of diversity that you will, you will be able to take advantage of here. Each year we enroll about 30 or 35 students from Hawaii. So it's certainly very well represented as well. I think certainly students um, uh, come and, and you're making a big investment in this and students come to USD, I think, because of, of our academic reputation. We are known for a number of our, our programs ranked nationally by a number of different publications and so forth. But more importantly, I think the academic reputation is one that really prepares students to go out into the world and not only make a difference, but to be able to, um, to get the job or go to the graduate school that, um, that they're most passionate about. All of our programs are very much grounded in the strong liberal arts uh, foundation. Um, students will take courses in a wide variety of areas at USD. We have a very interdisciplinary approach. You've heard that many schools offer majors and minors, and you can certainly do that at USD. All of our programs are complemented by, um, by a number of other experiences off campus. And again, certainly around our city through internships, we offer very extensive undergraduate research programs. Um, oftentimes students will be able to partner with a, with a faculty member or work at a company or organization around San Diego. We have an extensive study abroad program as well. And we connect students um, to our alumni network around, around the world. I think finally, I would say that um, at, at USD, we, we are very much a faith-based faith -based community committed to making a difference. And again, this goes back to the story I told you about our founding that, and we continue to, with that tradition in, in a lot of important ways. We've been recognized as one of 44 changemaker campuses around the world uh, by a, an organization called the Ashoka Foundation. And we received that designation because of our commitment to social justice, social innovation, entrepreneurship, sustainability, the global perspective that we offer to students. Um, we have an extensive study abroad program. We often are, are cited as having one of the highest participation rates in study abroad among any school in the country. And, and, and that's a, a built-in part of our, of our curriculum. We have a um, semester-long programs, year-long programs, short three-week programs between our semesters. So lots of ways that you can get that, that experience. All of those things, the, the strong uh, foundation, the, the, that notion of wanting to make a difference and the community service led us to receive a wonderful recognition recently in the Washington Monthly uh, as being ranked the number one school in the country for our community engagement. So certainly something that we take a lot of pride in. And again, is really what we were intended to do as a, as a university. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot about our admissions and financial aid process. I hope you'll reach out to me directly. Our admissions process is very much a, a holistic one. This year, we were a test blind institution, so we didn't look at test scores at all. We're going to continue that practice for next the next admission cycle as well, uh, understanding all the thing the issues around testing. And uh, I look forward to you reaching out, and we can talk more about whether USD is a really good fit. And again, I appreciate your time today. Mahalo. Thank you so much, University of San Diego. Now to wrap up our evening, we're going to give you some wonderful words of wisdom to hopefully grow on as you continue the college journey yourself. So if all the reps could answer this question in order that you present it this evening, that would be wonderful. And the question is right here. All right, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, especially considering uh, COVID. I think doing these kind of events is definitely uh, high on the list just because right now for a lot of uh, places, you can't go and see it in person. But I would say that part when everybody gets back to being fully open, going to visit, doing your research ahead of time is great, but going to visit really can cement one way or another if a school is a good fit for you. Um, I think my uh, recommendation also has a little bit to do with the kind of current situation that we're all in and that, yes, it is a little bit more difficult to travel. It's hard to visit. Um, so take advantage of the resources that schools are providing for students, um, you know, whether that's attending a program like this on the weekend or doing something maybe a little bit more passive. Follow some of the schools that you're interested in on Instagram. Um, find the account that they let students take over, you know, once a week, something like that, um, so that you can start to get a feel um, for all of the different places that you're interested in um, and really get a sense of, of what you know you might get out of that community and how you would fit into the student body 
my advice would to be ask hard questions. So whether that be on your in-person tour or something more virtually, ask a hard question. So ask the hard questions about, you know, financial aid and scholarships, that kind of stuff. Ask the question of, you know, what is your university going to do for me after I graduate? Ask hard questions because us as admissions representatives, that's what we're here to do is make sure that all of your guys' questions have answers throughout this entire process. My recommendation here would be um, focus on you. Um, in a pandemic, all of this information in co the college world has changed. And so if you need to focus on yourself and not what friends have done previously or advice, because we are living in such a, I would say, you know, changing time period for a lot of good. And there's a lot of challenges that come with that. And the one tip that I would leave you with is staying organized because staying on top of this information is really, really important as it's so fluid and changing all the time. But if you focus on yourself, stay organized, you will be successful in this college journey. I'll actually, uh, I like that, and I'm going to tack on to that uh, to, um, uh, to take whatever pressure you may be feeling about this process and try as much as you can to set it aside and enjoy this. This is a, a fun and exciting time to be able to explore your future and to have so much of your future ahead of you, um, to look at what are all the exciting opportunities that you could have and to enjoy it. And then the other piece I'll say is, um, uh, I know financial aid and, and cost is going to be a big part of this decision for most families. Um, and if you are feeling pressure about that, you are not alone. I was a first generation college student. And for me, this was a, a really big factor in my college search. So I would just um, add that there are a lot of financial aid opportunities out there and don't limit yourself um, by looking only at colleges that you think you can afford. Uh, allow yourself to go through the process, apply for financial aid and see what kind of opportunities come your way and what becomes affordable for you. Great, great, great advice uh, by by everyone here. I, I would say, um, you know, to kind of Tana, just uh, to build on that, you know, I, I think there, as you already saw, there's so many wonderful universities. You've heard from a small sampling today. You know, try to try to look at this as not a, you know, don't don't go to a place where you feel you have to go or there's pressure because there's a certain kind of school that you need to get into. There, there are thousands of wonderful universities, and what you need to do is think of a place where you're going to be comfortable, a place that's going to inspire you, a place that's going to excite you in a place that's going to challenge you and, and allow you to accomplish your dreams. And, and there's there's hundreds of them that will fit that that description. So be open to the possibilities and, and don't feel pressured um, and relax and breathe along the way. All right, great. We have one more question to go through. All right, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? Uh, I love this question. I think this is an easy one for me. At Oregon State University, uh, at the beginning of the school year, uh, the convocation is a event where uh, it's the official start of the academic year, and we uh, march students in a procession uh, down to uh, Research Stadium where graduation occurs, usually in four years after that for most people. And so it kind of bookends the uh, front of your college experience and it's a lot of excitement and tradition. It's kind of a, a rite of passage and it's just a really exciting time for students and, and parents and faculty because we all get to participate. Uh, at DePaul, I love our midnight breakfast that happens right before finals. Um, they, we actually went virtual with it this year. So um, they sent out a little recipe cards and shopping lists to the students um, saying like, here's stuff to get prepared so you can make your own pancakes, follow along. Um, and then they also had a like a pancake artist, I guess, for lack of a better term, doing, um, taking uh, like live requests of things to do and then creating um, those requests um, and sharing them um, in pancake form. So pretty cool. Um, and we're looking forward to doing that, of course, in person again here soon. For me, I would say it, it has to be our homecoming parade in, in October. You know, it's the crisp, nice mountain air. Uh, everybody in the town of Laramie shuts down and everybody lines the streets to you know, view the homecoming parade and then marches over and watches our Cowboys take on their opponent during the football game. So homecoming, that's that's got to be mine. 
Uh, all right, for me, it's going to be Pat's run, which is every April, and it's a 4.2 mile run in honor of Pat Tillman that you get to run through the city of Tempe and cross on the um, football field as the finish line. It is a huge event with, you know, over 50,000 people from the university community, city, people travel globally for it, and it's a signature event that everyone has to do at least once. Um, at Lawrence University, um, so I mentioned earlier that we have three terms. Um, so we have a fall term, a winter term, and a spring term. And in our part of Wisconsin, in fact, most of Wisconsin, you get to experience all three seasons. Um, so a beautiful fall, a beautiful winter, and a beautiful spring that at Lawrence, we actually have like a, a, like a festival or a carnival or some kind of celebration that's associated with each of the seasons. Um, so my favorite one of those is the winter carnival where um, we have broom ball out on the quad. Um, so it's on ice, like people just um, on their regular in their shoes or boots or whatever, take some like um, some brooms and play like hockey essentially with with these brooms. Um, there's ice skating going on. Uh, they have uh, they make ice sculptures. They have music. There's always music. Um, it's just a really fun. Um, it's just a really fun event. So that's probably going to be my favorite one. And, and for me at, at the University of San Diego, I would say it's certainly our all faith service that we, we it's a tradition that starts the spring semester. And um, it is led not only by a Catholic priest, but also by a um, um, by a, a rabbi, um, a, a Native American elder and several other faith leaders. And it's a great celebration of song, of dance, of prayer, of reflection. To, to really recognize the, our, our, our differences, uh, recognize our similarities and recognize that, um, you know, we, we all, these faith traditions all make up our community. Uh, and so it's a beautiful service. All right, that was wonderful information for everyone. Representatives, thank you so much. And thank you all for coming as well to join us this evening. This is a great time as well. Remember when you leave this window, there'll be a quick four question survey that you'll complete after you finish that part as well. Don't forget that this video will be at strivescan.com um, slash Hawaiian by the week as well. So now for our representatives that are here, thank you all so much. And to all the participants, thank you for coming as well. And you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you, you too. Mahalo. Yeah, thank you all so much.